I'd like to call the meeting to order, please. Okay. Okay. We're calling meter, meeting to order, please. Thank you. Uh, my name is Tony Nazardo. I'm co-chair along with Tom Dillon. And the uh, first order of business, I'd like to invite uh, Mayor Hoydick for uh, introducing the committee members. Thank you, Tony. Thank you all um, for willingly serving. There wasn't too much arm twisting on this but I couldn't think of a better group of people to be the ambassadors of conversation that we need to have surrounding this beautiful property and what we can do with it. For several decades, you know that things have languished. Um, Al and I were on the very first committee, Shakespeare Committee. Eddie, I'm not sure if you were on there, but you were participating, I think, with us. It was the very first one that the town council had organized um, in the late 1990s, early 2000s. I know we're really dating ourselves. So we've been working on what should we do with the Shakespeare Theater property, Shakespeare Theater for a long time. And um, I'm really encouraged that you, with all of your varied experiences and your backgrounds and your investment in Stratford, will help us with these community conversations to get us on, in the direction that we need to go as a community. So if you don't have any questions for me about the organization, I'm just gonna sit back and uh, listen. So thank you again for your service. Uh, I'm now gonna ask uh, each committee member to introduce themselves. I'll start with Al. Uh, yeah, my name is uh, Al Barron. Oh, okay, <laughs> technology. Uh, uh, as Mayor Hoydick said, we were on the first uh, committee that uh, worked. There's been a few committees since then. Uh, of course, obviously, some of the information we got from that is no longer relevant, but maybe it could be used. Uh, I'm a financial advisor with Ameriprise. I've been in a Stratford resident for about 22 years. Uh, I've been in, on a few boards, including the cab, uh, a cabaret in Bridgeport. Uh, that was years ago. I've been on the board of Perry House, and uh, well, we'll see what we can do to help out here. Thank you. Hi there. My name is Sib Law, uh, professional negotiator by trade, uh, but I'm also a playwright. And uh, many years ago, started uh, Festival Stratford out on the grounds of the Shakespeare Theater. Um, with a bunch of volunteers and then uh, handed that over and Eddie and Matt Catalano ran it for many years after that. Um, and so I've spent a lot of time out on that property dreaming about what could, could be happening out here and uh, I'm proud to be here and serve on this committee. Good evening, everyone. Amanda Meeson. Uh, professionally, I am the executive director of Sterling House Community Center, another historic uh, icon in town. Um, my roots and upbringing are in, are in theater. I went to school for musical theater and uh, started with um, my professional life really using theater and, and arts as a vehicle to make change. Um, a lot of New York City communities that were really arts deprived and using that as um, an empowerment tool and a way to engage uh, community conversation. So I'm excited to, to have both lenses here today. I'm so short. Um, <laughs> hello, my name is Patty Galello. I am co-owner of Galello Luchansky Funeral Home, which is on Main Street in Stratford. And I am so proud to be serving on this committee. I have lived my whole life in this town. My heart is in this town. And I have a big investment in this town. So I am proud to serve you. Good evening, everybody. I'm Tom Dillon. Uh, I am um, a professional IT consultant. Um, I'm a resident in the historic district. I've been walking the property almost daily for you know, quite a while. 
Um, I raised two kids in town, and um, I've been involved in a couple other committees in the, in the town, you know, associated with, you know, creating conversation around uh, goals for the community. So I'm really looking forward to facilitating a conversation amongst us all about what we can do with that beautiful, beautiful property. I'm Tony Nazardo. I'm a member of the RDA committee in, in town. <coughs> I've lived and or worked in Stratford since 1956. You do the math. I've, I lived on the corner of uh, Elm Street and Shore Road when the theater was going from uh, 1975 to 1991, so I can tell you what, what it was when it was in its heyday. And now I live adjacent to the property. There you butt my property. And that building and that property was right behind my house. Um, I, I'm co-chairing this committee, and I'm really glad that we have such a wonderful mix of people up here. Um, and I think all these people will be working for you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Frank Bavacqua. I'm a lifelong resident of Stratford. Uh, my wife and I raised two children, and they graduated from Bunnell, and they're uh, on to be on college now. I uh, represent the Economic Development Committee. I've been on that board for a while and uh, hope to hear your input and see what we can do with, with this property. Thank you, Mayor, Mayor Hoydick, uh, for selecting me to this um, committee. Uh, my name is Ed Goodrich. I was uh, on the Arts Commission for many years and um, very sad day to see the theater go down. But um, hopefully, as they say, past this prologue and we'll um, do something positive. Thank you. Also in attendance, we have uh, uh, two professionals, uh, Sasmitha Atoda, who is our town planner, who has been involved in uh, similar situations that we have. And also we have um, Patrick Carlton from MetroCog. They'll be helping us uh, with the actual surveys or and or uh, public hearings or meetings. Okay, there are two people that are probably running late in traffic. One's coming from Waterbury uh, that are not here yet. Scott Bartleson and Peter Wood. When they get here, we'll just come back and have them introduce themselves. Uh, now I'd like to give the floor to Tom Dillon, who's going to give you a brief overview. Thanks again. So, you know, we thought this opportunity, when the mayor asked us all to serve on this, we've had just a little bit of time to consider how to go about it. And there's a couple things that we'd like to make clear to everybody, um, so we start uh, with the best intentions. This part of the process of reacting to the, the really unfortunate fire is about gathering community input. This committee is about gathering community input. This committee is not about deciding what is to be done. Um, the people on this board, we all have opinions about what we'd like to see, but it's our responsibility to make sure that we hear what is said by everybody in the community. And so when we set up this first meeting, we kind of gnashed about the fact that we don't have a lot to say as of yet. We really haven't made a lot of decisions, and we are waiting to hear, to uh, offer an opportunity for public comment, and we thought that would be the right way to start this meeting. So we don't have a lot of announcements. There are not a lot of specific plans, um, but we do know that what our job is to do is to gather the community's input into what should happen now. What should be done with that property? Um, I'm lucky enough to live very close to it. It's my morning walk, it's my afternoon walk. I leave the house, I go to Bonds Dock, I walk down Shore Road, down to the boat launch and, and loop around it. So it's something very familiar and dear to me, um, despite the fact that maybe I went there as a kid, I think as a third grader, but the property in the theater is very special. And the most important thing about it is that we do something positive from here, given the circumstances that are, th that are here now. I really want to emphasize that, you know, the most important thing that we do here is we communicate. We communicate respectfully. 
Um, we listen to each other, and we kind of open our minds to opinions of all sorts. Um, it's an important part of this, this dialogue. And I think that's the most important tone that we want to set right away. This is an emotional issue, and it was a really hard loss. And there's a lot of history. Um, but what we know is that it's, it's gone now, and we have to do something. And there's all sorts of opportunities. And we're fielding it from the community as to you know, where we want to go. And so that's the most important thing. So we're not going to make a lot of announcements. There hasn't been a lot of planning to date, um, but we have a lot of people around us that is going to help us make reasonable and good decisions for the town and the property. Um, so I'd like to really uh, reintroduce Sasmitha Otota, who's our planner. She has a great deal of experience. She has a, a professional life developed around municipal development. And uh, I'm really looking forward to working with you. And uh, I'm very much uh, looking forward to the process. Um, Patrick Carlton is another professional uh, that works for MetroCog. MetroCog is the Council of Governments, and they're a municipal consultant, and there's opportunities um, that we might be able to draw from their experience. And uh, Patrick's worked on projects uh, in town before, and uh, I can tell you I've worked with Patrick in at least, I think, a dozen different meetings, and I've always been impressed by his professionalism, and I think that we can look to um, them for advice about what we want to do, about what this town wants to do. You know, this is not an, an outsider coming to tell us what to do. This is our opportunity to create something new here for ourselves and our town and the future of the town. Um, what's going to happen is we're going to have a series of, we're going to have um, subsequent meetings. Um, part of our process tonight is to identify that next date if we can do it, it's live. Um, and in that second meeting is when we're gonna really be sitting down and talking about the structure of this community conversation. How is it gonna be structured? Where is it gonna be located? How long is it gonna go on for? Um, how many meetings are required? What avenues do we have to collect people's opinion and I, I, you know, from my small experience in public service, a lot of people don't like to talk publicly. So we want to create an avenue for people to submit comments where they don't have to feel the p pressure of publicly speaking. We're going to be exploring all of those issues. And of course, because it's, it's a public process, all of that is public. So there is really, we want to run it as transparently as possible and as respectfully as possible. And we need all your help. And so I'm asking for that. I would really appreciate it if we could uh, come together and be thinking about that every time we come to a meeting, every time we come to an opportunity. How can we be civil together? How can we be respectful together? How can we make sure we're listening to each other? Um, so those are the major items, I think, um, for what we, we intended to kind of go. So yeah, exactly. So what we did was we had tried to get this meeting together as quickly as possible so things weren't dragging out and leaving a lot of questions for people um, in the aftermath of the fire. We were able to get this room, um, but there is another meeting scheduled for 7 p.m. So another previously scheduled meeting is getting ready to start, and we really feel like maybe we could be respectful and give them five or 10 minutes before the start of their meeting so we're cleaned out. And lo and behold, we're, we're pretty much right on time. We've set aside an hour um, to listen for public comment. Um, there's been a sign-up sheet sent around, and in just in the, or in, the, in the spirit of just trying to keep things contained, we're asking everybody, and I've been assigned taskmaster, that we limit our comments to two minutes. And I'll kind of wave at you, and I would really appreciate not having to like really wave at you. Um, but you know, we, we wanted to make sure that before we made a bunch of announcements about things that may or may not happen, that we listen to everybody that um, is here. So I don't think there's much reason to delay the public comment section. Oh, I'm sorry, of course, I skipped the second meeting. Um, all right, one piece of internal business. We were able to identify two slots that may or may not work for everybody. Um, the first is February 13th, same time or February 19th, same time. So 
without it getting terribly complicated, can, it, can anybody do one or both? You're flexible. 13 or 19, I got a trade here. Everybody else is good? Okay. I think 19. Okay, we're not, it doesn't look like we're gonna get everybody. But everybody's good except Amanda for 19. All right, I mean, I think. Okay, so we're gonna make this totally unofficial. We're gonna target the 19th. We're gonna scour the calendar one more time so we can get all the committee members on board right away. The next meeting is quite important, so we, we might really go out of our way to get everybody there just to warn everybody. Um, and so we'll go with that. Okay. So that was the intro. You know, it's all about uh, community input and gathering that information and fostering a conversation. So um, with that spirit in mind, there is a sign-up sheet. Karen, how many people signed up? You have seven? Yes. Terrific. So then we have an amazing runtime. Great. So, and then as part of the public record, when you approach the podium, please state your name and your address. Uh, this is, a, you know, for Stratford residents. The first person is Kevin Moore. put my name down on the list a little bit, but still got called first. All right, Kevin Moore, uh, 50 Morningside Drive in Stratford. Uh, born and raised here in Stratford, in fact, born the same year that the uh, Shakespeare Theater came to be. Uh, my mom was a uh, very extremely involved with the Shakespeare Theater Guild, as well as with the Historical Society for many, many years, and because of that, I was also had a chance to be part of all the magic of Shakespeare and of the history of Stratford as well. Uh, got to get a chance to meet many of the actors. They did cast parties and things like that to where I met many of the people who I didn't know were great at the time because I was so little. Till then I looked, grew up later and said, oh, Herman Munster, I sat and had a hamburger with him. You know, so, but I, I so wholeheartedly support the fact that now there is going to be something that's going to be happening. Uh, it's unfortunate that it had to happen this way. Uh, there were many efforts in the past for this to happen. But um, through, from what I suspect, I was out of the town for a few years, wasn't part of all the political scenes and all of that sort of stuff. I probably would have been right in the middle of one of those Shakespeare subcommittees that had happened. I would have been one of the one of the members, I'm sure. Yeah, um, but I so wholeheartedly support that we have a good, proper board here that is going to ask for the public input because I know I speak for myself as well as for everybody else here that this is uh, a long time coming, and that uh, we're looking forward to the future and that we learn from our past mistakes. All right, thank you. Next is Rosemary Martin Pavic. Um, good evening to the committee. Uh, I am Rosemary Martin Haduck. Uh, I live at 401 Hilltop Drive in the 7th District. Um, I am uh, the chair of Stratfords of the World, Connecticut. And I mention that only because of my involvement with Stratford, Ontario, Stratford-upon-Avon, England, where the other two thriving uh, Shakespeare theaters are. Uh, I want to be clear that I speak only for myself. I do not speak for the Stratfords of the World Committee. I'm here to represent just me. And um, I've lived in, uh, owned property in Stratford since 1974. I was attracted to this town because of the Shakespeare Theater. 
my husband and I, my husband at the time and I, bought property at 1822 Main Street, which now has a historic marker on it. It did not then, <clears throat> because the historic district had not yet been formed. We purchased that house so that I could walk to the theater. I was a young English teacher, and the building inspired me. It inspired me in so many ways, and especially to buy property here in Stratford. Uh, now, in my second home with my second husband, and um, <clears throat> things are going well. Uh, <clears throat> um, I want to point out to Mr. Barron that I am also an employee of the Downtown Cabaret Theater, so I know a little something about audiences and how to attract them and the fact that audiences are looking for places to see art in the live performance venue. I also want to point out that our theater is a global story. It always was and it still is. I have in my hand a copy of the Stratford-upon-Avon Herald, January 17th, 2019 edition. Headline, Tragic Last Act for S Stratford Theater in Connecticut. Um, the photograph in the article was taken by a visitor from Shakespeare's Stratford in 2014 when we, the Stratfords of the World, Connecticut, hosted 88 international Stratfordians and we're proud to show off our theater despite its condition. Um, we excuse are, me. We um, are global <laughs> and we're going to be global again. Thank you so much. Thank it was you a pleasure so much. to bring my students in 1984 to one of the last student seasons. Thank you. Thank you. Bruce Hirsch. Uh, good evening, my name is Bruce Hirsch. I live at 255 Rockland Avenue, and my history with the theater is storied. I think I'll wait for another meeting for that. Please forgive me, um, after the tears had dried finding out about the theater, this article struck me just as heavily, and if like, please bear with me, I, I think it's appropriate to read it. It was written by a couple in Stratford, I won't mention their names. The death of the American Shakespeare Theater in Stratford will undoubtedly inspire several pundits to write sonnets or poems or verses uh, bard style to indicate um, either sadness or glee depending on what they felt about the landmark. The stunning end to a cultural icon in this region, however, doesn't deserve to be treated so flippantly. On the contrary, the fiery demise deserves serious reflection because it speaks to how culture that challenges the mind and helps us communicate with one another has been eroded so severely in recent decades. When we moved to Stratford in 1984, we had arrived shortly after the theater's last productions, but we were excited about the prospect for the theater's renewal and that we would be right here in town to enjoy it. Decades later, the building is charred. Uh, the building is charred rubble, but still standing is the legacy of years of poor leadership, unfortunately, from the town and state officials who didn't take the theater's revitalization seriously, nor did they see that when we don't embrace how culture of the theater and literature can advance us as a society, what replaces it is a mindless drivel. There will be some who say good riddance to an, a chronic problem to be solved. A builder will likely put condos in the in location, God forbid, that's my comment, and make a fortune off exorbitant prices that people will be willing to pay for waterfront views but there will still be dead space in our culture, our brains, because leaders weren't there to make sure an edifice that entertained and stimulated people by thinking had a lasting presence in our midst. All the years the building stood silent, waiting to be used, surely it was symbolically saying, you will miss me when I'm gone. Thank um, you. My affiliation with the theater is 30 years at least, maybe more, so I do hope that from this something will rise like the phoenix. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm going to interrupt the public uh, comment for just 
one minute so that, uh, Scott, you can introduce yourself. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm so sorry I'm late. I work in Hartford, got stuck in traffic. Uh, my name's Scott Bartleson. I'm really excited to be on this uh, task force. Um, I'm a theater professional. I work at Hartford Stage in management currently. Um, and right before working at Hartford Stage, I had a position at Shakespeare on the Sound, which is an outdoor Shakespeare company down in Rowayton. Um, so I'm just really looking forward to hearing everyone tonight and getting this started. Thanks. Thanks so much, Scott. And then we'll just can keep on going. Okay. Next is Roxanne Kazarian. Hi, um, my name is Roxanne Kazarian. I'm also a resident of Stratford since 1956. Um, so maybe we're tied. Could you um, just, uh, would you state your address for the record, please? Oh, 585 Cut Spring Road. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, before the comment, I was wondering if this is the proper forum to ask a question. Um, I know you say you don't have a lot of updates, but if there is a possibility to put in the record either the condition of the property and or what the status is on insurance, I would anticipate that would help inform some of our comments at least at a later stage. Um, I'm a practicing attorney. I currently work um, on a consulting business, but I've spent most of my career working in-house in corporations in Stratford. I've been chief counsel for Ethan Allen. I was chief counsel for a $12 billion a year commodity trader in Stanford, and even was chief counsel for an entertainment company, uh, Gibson Guitar, where I got to work with a lot of artists and musicians. We had a pr our own performing venues. Um, so I understand just how critical that is, but generationally, I'd also like to put on the record just how Stratford once caught magic in a bottle. Um, Stratford was a factory town that had an amazing uh, palace for theater, the Shakespeare Theater. And you don't really find those combined. And I would like to see the theater return to its glory. But I also don't want Stratford to think maybe it has to be so insular. I would like it to look at other regional resources for assistance on my own, uh, I will say that my student seasons at the Shakespeare Theater helped my love of education. I was the first woman from Stratford to be accepted at Yale. I took Shakespeare at Yale. I understand the resources they have there. You can walk in and check out a first folio. Um, and a few years ago, I actually contacted uh, trustees at Yale to see if they would be interested in helping support the renovation those are the kind of resources we had. I, I would just like us to think a little bit creatively. Thank you so much. Thank you for your comments. <laughs> Orna Rawls. Hi, I'm Orna Rawls. Um, a neighbor of Eddie Goodrich. <laughs> I want to highlight a couple I'm of I'm sorry. extraordinary. You, you, I'm sorry. You need you my address? It's part of the process. You're sorry. invited for tea. Okay. 768 Judson Place. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> I lived in the historic district most of my adult life. Anyhow, the two extraordinary features uh, to Stratford that I would like to highlight. One is the amazing community of grassroots organization making art. And two is the shameful homelessness of those art organizations. So I would like to share with you two of my mantras. One, don't waste a good crisis. We had a crisis. It was traumatic to a lot of us. Let's not waste it. And two, let's transform problems into possibilities. So think about all those homeless art organizations, how they could that bring a lot of people from out of town to town, and not to speak about pride of place. If they had complex for the arts, with a small theater for square one, a black box for square rights, a place for the Art Guild, a place for Stratford of Reunion, a place of sister city. 
If you look at the models of Richfield Playhouse and Stage One here in Fairfield, how they combine art with business and have done a good job at it, and we can do that too and provide home for all our organizations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Lau Hadek. Good evening, Lonnie Hayduck, 401 Hilltop Drive, Stratford. You met my wife earlier. I'll be brief. I want to speak just very briefly to the, um, to the uh, financial aspect of, of Shakespeare. And in addressing you, I appreciate that, but I'm also addressing all the citizens of Stratford. I hope you'll hear me. They've all heard, I'm sure you've all heard of Budweiser, Coca-Cola, Marriott, Adidas, Disney, and Shakespeare. Every one of those words is a moneymaker. Every one of them. Shakespeare is a brand. It's been proven time and time again in other areas of the world that support Shakespeare and uh, theaters that s support the, his plays. I didn't have a chance to rehearse this, so give me one second. Um, I have heard in discussion with other members of Stratford, other residents of Stratford, that, well, I don't think there are enough people in Stratford to support a Shakespeare theater. I've heard this said by many people. And I often wonder, supposing the residents of Anaheim, California said to Walt, not enough people here to support your theme park. I think Shakespeare is a winner, and I hope that we can come together and create a, a new one, a new place for it. Thank you. Thank you. Suzanne? Kachmar? I'm Suzanne Kachmar. I live at 93 Temple Street, a recent returning to Stratford. Very happy um, to be welcome to be here. Thank you, Mayor Hordick. Thank you to all of you for serving on this panel. I think we need to be forward thinking and future think it like, con like the future of what we should be doing with uh, this property and what this arts center and enrichment um, location can be. It's got to be relevant to the 21st century. It should probably not only be art. I think we should think about innovation. We should think about technology. We should think about where it is on the water, natural science, other relevant issues like cultural heritage, cultural diversity, cultural literacy, climate control. Uh, those are things that can be combined with the arts and can make it unique and relevant, not only to Bridgeport, it could house these other arts organizations as well, but it could bring us into the future and keep it forever evolving. The other thing I want to say is when I talk about the future is I am a product of the Shakespeare Theater. It influenced me as a child. I saw that roof throughout the town you knew. It was a symbol of artistic aspiration. And it was something that also the programs was the only thing that inspired me living at Stratford. We have a lot of youth here who could really feel it and be excited, but maybe art isn't the only place. Maybe it's work, maybe it's technology, maybe it's other things. And I think we have an opportunity to rethink it. Somebody brought up Yale. <laughs> Yale could make a wonderful uh, art piece of architecture over there. It could start off small with baby steps. They did the band shell at Seaside Park. They have a very strong uh, theater arts department. They have an urban design program. They should be on this panel. I'm glad you're here too, though. That's great. But thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Excuse me. I'm just going to interrupt it again. We have another member just join us. Um, Peter, would you, like, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, I'm Peter Wood. I am a uh, 30 year resident of Stratford. Thank you. It's Peter Wood, 30 year resident here. Uh, I, I was one of the founding members of Putney Players, uh, which performed at Booth Park for many years. Uh, Professionally, I'm a development consultant and put together financing for affordable housing developments all over the country. 
Um, I was uh, a member of the Shakespeare subcommittee uh, that served over the past two years looking at means to attempt to protect the Shakespeare building uh, before, of course, uh, the tragedy uh, that happened last month. So I am very committed to seeing uh, the arts continue to survive on this property uh, in whatever way we can best envision. Thank you. Dan Rawson. Good evening, my name is Stan Rawson. Uh, my property is at 753 Stratford Avenue, directly across Selby's Pond from the former theater. My view was across the pond looking at that building. So I'm m most familiar with it uh, and, and the property, okay? But I present uh, some alternative thoughts. Um, much of what is being discussed right now has a high emotional content, and I get that. I understand the historical significance. I went there as a school kid to the theater, okay? Um, I, I understand the iconic nature. I understand and agree with much of everything that's being said. However, with the venue that it was, having not worked for decades, when we did in fact have a building, what makes it work now when we don't have a building. The emotion and the practicality aren't necessarily the same, okay? So what's alternative use for the property? Uh, I, I'm not opposed at all to some form of continuation of the previous venue, but it has to have a proven viability, okay? I'm thinking of that financially. So I suggest something like Shakespeare Park. Um, the, the property is gorgeous, and the waterfront nature of it. Have summer outdoor theater, you know, th things like that. H have it be seasonal, okay? Put, put little statues, monuments, whatever, to, to maintain the theme, but without the huge financial burden that comes with trying to resurrect something that hasn't been, hasn't been viable for, for 30 plus years. So I encourage thought in a different direction. Um, it, it, and this goes against the grain emotionally. But again, I'm trying to look at it practically. It's a beautiful piece of property. And I think there could be more practical and viable uses with a connection to the arts. Like I said, summer outdoor theater, something like that. That's all, just want to present different, different thoughts. Thank you. Terrific. Thank you. <laughs> Joseph Caselli. Good evening. <clears throat> um, I live at 115 Legion Avenue, and uh, my name is Joseph Caselli. I think I'm about the old, old youngest one here to speak tonight. Um, I've been in this town my whole life. I own a business right on uh, Nichols Avenue. And I would love to see something come that could revitalize our town, bring something in there, like the young lady sit over here with culinary arts center, something like that. Uh, science, do with the water, that'd be really cool. Clamshell, something that could bring music, because you know, the Shakespeare Theater was closed three decades. Half my life, 60% of my life. And uh, I'd like to see something you know, get rebuilt there. I've been to Broadway plays, over 2,000 events of going here and there, and to make money it has to be over 2,000 seats, plus to, to generate any kind of cash that would to generate money for the you know town and keep the place uh, financially open. Um, I would like to see, yeah, like the half clam show would be great to be there and uh, you know just revitalize something because that was like our white elephant. We wa wasted you know who knows how much money on it to keep it going and three decades it's just been closed. I've been there, you know, 87 when I was in Benoit High School. Um, to see the Tempest. Beatlemania, you know, Wonderamba, if anybody knows that one, you know. I would love to see something go there. That would be really nice because it's a beautiful piece of property. Hate to see it go to condos, but, you know, let's try to rebuild it and make something that would 
be happy for the town and bring people back to us. You know, thank you very much. Thank you. Lisa Kazak. Good evening, my name is Lisa Kasak, 50 Birds Eye Street. Um, I have been in Stratford for seven years, a lot less than many of you on the committee, but no less proud to be a Stratfordite. I spent several years on one of the earlier Shakespeare committees, which was chosen to bring her back. I wish I knew more than one person on the committee. I would like to know how the committee was formed and chosen. Thank you. Thank you. Nanette Barron Brown. Hi, Nanette Brown, uh, 40 Max Harbor Court, right next to Tony. Um, and I'm pretty new to Stratford, only a few years, but I grew up in Philadelphia, and uh, at least once a year they'd put us all on the bus and drive us up here with a lot of snacks, and then I'd wake up and see the elm tree, and there we were. And uh, so it was sort of funny to buy a house uh, right next to where I used to go every year. But what I want to just talk about real quick is my profession is software development. I worked for 24 years for Pitney Bowes, and now I work for Carnegie Mellon. We do a lot of government consulting. And the approach to software used to be what they call waterfall model, right? Where you do all of these requirements, and then you do all this design, and then you do all these reviews, and finally you'd code it and you'd test it, and it would take years, and usually at the end it would be wrong, right? And you have to go back and redo it. And the kind of software development that we're doing now it's called agile software development. And the idea is you get some requirements and stuff and then you do an experiment, you try something. Okay, and then you learn, you get feedback, and then you try something else. Um, and it's more fun and you learn quicker. You learn quicker by actually acting rather than just by sitting around and cogitating. So I guess my main comment is, I don't know what the right thing to do is here. I'd like to see something creative and fun and energizing, and I'm not sure how to get there, but I do think that by taking more of an approach of some experimentation, some little bites, seeing what works, and then readjusting, I, I think if the DOD can do that, take an agile approach on some of their aircraft building, right, <laughs> F-35s or F-22s, and they can start to look at using an agile approach, then we can certainly maybe use a little bit of agility in terms of how we approach this problem. So that's my comment. Thank you. <laughs> Sybil Friedman. I'm Sybil Friedman. I live at 170 Brookside Drive in Stratford. I moved here in 2004 to spend the rest of my, the last part of my life. I loved it because it was a great movie theater. There was a little theater with a nice home. Um, and there was Shakespeare, or the hope for Shakespeare at any rate. I didn't expect it to turn into Condo City. And it's, it's heartbreaking to lose all the things that made the place such a wonderful place to come to. So I hope this, that we can recover and that this is the beginning of it. Thank you. Uh, that is the end of the uh, people that signed up on the sheet. Uh, there is still some time left in the meeting. Does anybody else want to offer anything in the public comment period? Terrific. <laughs> Hi, good evening. Um, my name is Rachel Rusnak. I live at 1515 Elm Street here in Stratford. Um, I'm a newer resident. I've only been here about two years. 
Uh, there are a lot of reasons why we decided to make Stratford our home, um, but the opportunity to engage with the arts um, had a lot to do with it. And I'd just like to say, as a younger person who lives here, um, I'm tired of going to Milford and tired of going to Fairfield to do anything really. <laughs> um, so I really hope, I'd like to echo a lot of the comments. I think we heard some really thoughtful things. Um, I think there's such an opportunity here. I really hope that the town doesn't let it go to waste. Um, and I'd love for something agile and quickly to happen um, that can draw people to Stratford instead of pushing them to other towns along the coast. Thank you. <laughs> okay, this is going to be close to the last call. Uh, anybody else has any uh, interest? Please. My name is Lynn Muniz, and I live on 1783 Elm Street, and I've been there for 37 years, and I've been a scenic artist in, for Broadway productions for 38 years, and I actually worked at the Shakespeare Theater the last few years, painting scenery for the last few shows. And <clears throat> I don't believe that there should be a theater back on that property. I would love to see a band shell. <clears throat> I would love to see theater productions come to a band show, almost like a, um, a Tanglewood kind of thing. That's what I would love to see. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. You know, uh, here we go. One more. This is great. It's like an auctioneer. <laughs> Hi. My name is Caroline um, Mandillo. I live next door to the theater. I grew up there. My parents were the Davenports who made the original contact to even get the theater over here. Um, we're a, we did not initiate the Shakespeare Theater. It um, came to us as a gift. And I don't know that the town as a population ever rose to accept and appreciate the gift. But we have an opportunity and the world is really of who are interested in Shakespeare as well as many, many actors and, and people of theatrical, profound theatrical background are waiting to see us demonstrate uh, vision. I think that's what this is about. I don't, we're, uh, we have an opportunity here. It's in our grasp to do something singular, special, and birthed right here. And I think we really need to take the time to ponder and not be quick to think in terms of economy and what's just going to be uniquely Stratford, but rather what gifting we have been blessed with and how are we going to go forward. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, we're gonna, we're, we understand that, but we're gonna just follow the public comment period and then we're gonna come back around to that. That's okay, I understand. Good evening, my name is Karen Burke. I live at 750 East Broadway. Thank you. Um, my concern is, I've lived here for only six years. Uh, I pay a huge amount in property tax. Um, my name is Karen Burke. I live at, I live at 750 East Broadway, um, which is perpendicular to Elm Street. I'm in the historic district. Um, I pay a huge amount in property tax. And um, I've always 
thought that the Shakespearean theater should be open uh, for business. It does not have to be just Shakespearean. If we do not get culture in this town, it will fail. If you look at surrounding towns in Connecticut, right in Fairfield County, every one of them has a major theater. We are doing something wrong. All my friends pass by Stratford and either go to Fairfield or Milford or New York City. Um, we have such an opportunity right now, and I'm not sure why we would not put something in. It doesn't have to be Shakespeare, you know? It, it just has to be a theater where we can bring in entertainment and bring people into the town. Then businesses will want to come and be in this town. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, we still have time for public comment. Please. Hi, uh, my name is Liz Dominguez. Uh, I live on 146 Wood Avenue. I just moved to Stratford this summer. Um, by trade, I'm a journalist, so I'm just kind of covering this right now. Uh, but I am also a real estate agent. And I know a lot of people my age right now are coming to Stratford because it's so much more affordable than the surrounding areas. But I do agree with what people said about culture and needing some sort of attraction to keep people here because otherwise they're gonna end up going somewhere else. Um, and I think it needs to be something versatile. I love Shakespeare, I was an English major. I know some others do not. So I think some sort of production company or um, theater arts place that can have several different types of arts would probably be the best option and would attract a lot of, uh, you know, of the younger generation. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have, please. Hi, my name is Deb Brelsford. I'm at 201 Bridgeview Place. I've scrubbed the walls, the teak walls that are no longer there over the years. I've had children involved in the programs uh, through the different academies. And I myself would like to see um, some family productions being able to be produced at whatever is the future. So if it's a center for the arts or um, starts out, you know, small and gradually is built upon. I think that it would be, as what everyone else has said, uh, a huge plus to our town. Uh, I was kind of thinking as I was listening to people talk about Bass Pro Shop and how they've built that um, kind of monstrosity, but when you think about it, it really would correlate their model with our town for all seasons. Um, we could do different things during different seasons on this property. I, I know it's the Housatonic River, it's a little different than what I saw in Providence, Rhode Island, but they have something called water fire. I think there is just so much opportunity and I think that people have shared so many creative ideas um, and I just really, really, really implore that this goes forward. Thank you. Thank you. Still looking for hands. There always seems to be one more. But I don't see any. Okay. Everybody's happy. No one has any comments to be, you know, further to make. We have a, just a little bit more time. Sorry, not you. Ah, I knew it. <laughs> going once, going twice. Bill O'Brien, 450 Chickadee Lane, also 9th District Councilman currently. And I hope. Uh, in the not too distant future, I get to vote on what goes there. Um, how about a nice new athletic facility, Ed? And I'm just kidding because we've, <laughs> we've kidded about this for years. <laughs> if I were a wealthy man, I have a great vision for the site. That would include great landscaping and uh, beautiful gardens. And down the road, I'll share some of my thoughts on that. And I hope there's a lot of thought giving into, like look at the future too. If, if that entertainment center comes to um, Richboard with MGM, we've got to find something that doesn't compete with that. 
We have a great need for theater for in the spotlight, square one theater, the high schools. So there's a lot of potential there and I, I, uh, I think this is on the right road and uh, thank you for all volunteering to serve. Thank you. By the way, that condos will and cannot be built there without state approval and that won't happen. Okay, so now we're closing in on time. I really appreciate everyone's comments. They're all gonna be you know, factored into everything that the committee do does. Um, so I'm gonna close the public comment period and uh, I'm gonna let uh, Tony take over and uh, we do actually have a copy of the deed here. In, in response to the question about the uh, deed restrictions from the state, uh, I'd like to read it to you exactly from the deed. The town will reserve in perpetuity no less than 20% of the property as open space and preserve all regulated wetlands. The open space areas may consist of no more than four separate pieces with the goal of preserving the open space in the largest fe parcels feasible. Prior to any new construction or expansion of the existing buildings, the town will survey the premises and will notify the state of the designated open space and regulated wetlands. The entire property shall remain accessible to the general public for their enjoyment in perpetuity. The town, the town shall make reasonable efforts to utilize their premises for public entertainment purposes, included but not limited to continuing its historic use for theater purposes. That's it. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Sec Do I have a second? All in favor? Thank you, everyone. Thanks for coming out tonight. Thank you.